So welcome, I'm Ryan, and this is my podcast, Ryan's Modern Life. Thanks for stopping by. Every week, I'll be documenting the week that was, news and entertainment, a bit like a chat down the pub with your northern mate. This week, I'll be chatting about homeschooling, The Mandalorian, Miles Morales on PS5, and a little bit more. I think the first thing to talk about is why. Why do a podcast? Well, to be honest, lockdown has been pretty tough at times. I miss meeting my friends. I miss going to the pub quiz. I miss chatting with colleagues at work. Being reflective, I miss some of the social aspects of life. You might even say I was feeling a bit lonely. I wanted to do something to talk about life, the ups and downs, and share that with others who might be feeling the same way. So I thought I'd start a podcast so if there are others that are missing having a chat, they can. Uh, This week's guest is my good friend, uh, Craig Bradshaw. Craig, would you like to introduce yourself? Hello, uh, my name is Craig, as Ryan so eloquently said. Um, yeah, I've known Ryan for, for a long, long time, so yeah, very, very excited to to be on his inaugural podcast uh, as, as his first guest. Um, so hopefully, um, I don't go down in, in flames. Uh, it's not, uh, it's been, been for while it lasted, but yeah, thank you for having me on. Uh, and hopefully, I don't, don't disappoint your, your burgeoning <laughs> listener base. <laughs> the millions and millions of fans. Yes. Cool. So, I was just going to, first thing I think about talking about is. The last week so my last week has been pretty intense Leo and Ted have been homeschooling which has been difficult because they've been isolating they haven't had symptoms themselves but someone in each of their classes uh, had it so they had to work from home for two weeks which you know for me means working at home as well um, I don't know about you but when I'm working at home I, I kind of like to be uh, not disturbed, um, especially because a lot. Some of my job involves making phone calls, which you know the boys really. You know they they have to, you know, stay out of the room for those. Um, they're confidential, um, so yeah, it's pretty tough. And also, just I think the fact of not going out and talking to anybody, because um, even at the weekends, uh, because they've got self self isolate, they've had to um, stay in at the weekends as well. So. It meant we haven't really been able to do anything, um, but to be fair to them, I think it's been that they've been really good. You know, they both worked independently at times. Ted probably needed a bit more support than uh, than Leo did, um, but um, yeah, that's kind of my last week, and I was glad to get back to get back to work. Really, what, what have you been up to this week, Craig? Uh, well, last week, yeah, um, a little bit different for me. Uh, obviously. Um, my daughter is is in nursery. Um, thankfully, touch wood, um, she's not had any. They've not had any outbreaks um, in the in the sort of group. They've kind of all they've all got the sort of little bubbles across different age groups. So Connie's in like the the zero to two uh, group, and they've not had any sort of isolation cases there. So that's been quite good. Um, it's been a couple of times where Connie's had to stay home because uh, she's had symptoms, um, which is which hasn't been too bad because obviously the tests have come back negative and stuff. But mm. uh, yes, yeah, so she's been quite good because obviously you do get that routine of, of Connie being in nursery. Um, three days a week and that does give you a chance to kind of get your work done but, but from from the flip side of me is obviously um, I've got a lot of sort of autonomy and work from home on my own um, so sometimes I find it hard to like stick to a routine because you know you've got so much flexibility with, with the work you do and, and what time you do certain things and you end up just you know putting things off until you know you, before you know it's the end of the day and you're like I've done nothing today um, mm. so yeah uh, I think whereas I think if I, if I did have kind of a bit more sort of chaos around me I'd probably feel like I could focus on my work a bit more but because I've got peace and quiet and I've got sort of you know no dis- distractions I end up distracting myself by trying to decide what to do and, and trying to prioritise certain things so yeah um, that's bringing its own challenges but um, it's nearly Christmas so hopefully I can just you know that's where procrastination is um, accepted and, and sort of encouraged <laughs> amongst people so that's kind of yeah just got, got a few more days to go until I can actually uh, procrastinate without feeling guilty for, for not doing my job so yeah that's, that's always a bonus I think for myself like I I I've worked from home prior to lockdown, but um, there's been times that when I've been working at home and lockdown, and then I've had days, you know, especially because in my job it can be really really busy, like you know, phone calls every every ten minutes. But then there's other days where I might be busy to begin with, but it just takes one thing to knock me off track, and then you know I cry, you know, I, I struggle to get back to it if you know what I mean, like. You know, I've just been distracted, even to the point where just putting some washing on, and then I'm like, right, what do I do next? And and then just, you know, I've maybe had my lunch at half eleven instead of, you know, later on, 
And uh, yeah, it can be difficult, I think, when you're working from home to kind of self motivate. Um, yeah, I know what you mean. Um, so I, I kind of feel that. Yeah, and I know, I know like, kind of obviously, the, the phrase um, unprecedented times has is, is been, you know, said, said to death uh, this year. But yeah, obviously, you know, t- you know, never ever before we you've had to kind of interrupt a meeting because the postman's here or there's a, a parcel at the door you need to let the dog out or you know yeah. there's a kid screaming in the background and stuff so it, it's, it definitely brings with its, its own challenges but um yeah i'm quite looking forward to, to getting back to hmm. um the office and actually just having a bit of routine to tea dates so that, that definitely helps because then you, you know there is that kind of old old adage of like well at the minute it's like are you working from home or are you, are you living at the office and it's kind of it does feel out of it for me you kind of just go from one room to the other and you're not really getting any any change of scenery other than you know maybe a bit of exercise or other nipping out to get a few bits and bobs but yeah it's, it's definitely been tough i think is it's, it's one uh, an understatement i suppose yeah i definitely agree i mean i find it tough really at times and i think like in the summer we almost felt you know, I almost felt like, oh, we're getting to some degree of normality. And then, like, the last six, eight weeks, I think, things have been taken away again, if that makes sense. And, and it's been, you know, that it's been quite stressful. And whereas in the lockdown in the summer, spring, the weather was really nice. You could go out for walks. Like, now it's just wet, miserable and horrible. And, um, yeah, it's, I, I'm, I, I'm, yeah, I'm glad the longer lockdown was in you know, earlier on in the year rather than now. But, you know, we don't know what's going to come. I mean, the vaccine, I think, is just a miracle of science. And, I'm, you know, I'm kind of... I, I, when I read that news, I was a bit... You know, it was, it was kind of one of the first things that had given me hope in months. Um, you know, I just see it as a really positive step and just thought... And I see people saying things like, you know, oh, it's not tested properly or... Oh, I'm not taking it. You don't know what's in it, and I just think that's just ridiculous. Do you know what I mean? It's, 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 it's scientists who've tested it, who've, who've, you know, they wouldn't put it out there if it was dangerous. And uh, I think I see, I saw a, a, a meme online of, um, you know, oh Doris says that she won't take the vaccine, but she'll buy um, twenty burgers for a pound from uh, from from yeah. from, uh, from farm food, so and she doesn't know where where, where it's coming from. Uh, and I just think it's right, like you know, people eat things that obviously, you know, is not pure pork or pure beef, um, and um, but yeah, they're not happy to put a vac, you know, take a vaccine that's um, obviously been tested and is 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 is, is going to be the way that we get out of this, really. Yeah, so yeah, I, th- I agree. Uh, it's, it's a weird one, but I th- yeah, it's funny. Kind of, you know, everybody becomes a, an expert on, on whatever it is that's, that's going on. You know, kind of, everybody's an expert on kind of, uh, you know, the, the, the two meter rule, the, the the one meter plus rule, the the rule of six and stuff. And now they have definitely vaccine. It's kind of like, oh well, yeah, um, yeah. I, I don't trust it. Uh, I, th- I think I can see kind of why because hmm. obviously the the, the traditional um, sort of lead times for for, for vaccines, you know. It's, like you know, decades really to get yeah, something yeah. from from sort of concept to to um, pharmacies and stuff. But yeah, to get it done in like twelve months is pretty is pretty impressive. So yeah, I can imagine a, a bit of skepticism. But yeah, compared to you know your your local takeaway, maybe <laughs> um, a, a kebab, which I know you've I know you've partaken in. in I have time, I you know, have partaken. You, know, <laughs> you know you know the pedigree of, 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 a, of a kebab. Um, but yeah, so yeah, it's, it's, it's definitely uh, fun to see. But yeah, hopefully hopefully it works. Um, yeah, but I, 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 agree. I know what you mean with the, the, the sort of winter coming. I think you know you feel you feel locked down a bit more when you know it's raining outside or it's cold outside, and you can't you can't just sit in the garden. You can't just go for a walk. You've got to kind of like, well, it's raining. Um, we can't do anything, so we will just stay inside, and that, that definitely feels harder. Um, especially with kids. I think without kids, you know, um, you know, I just put a film on or you know just do some decorating. But I think with kids, it's like right, well, how do we keep them entertained until they go to bed? Hmm. Uh, well, that's, that's kind of what I feel like sometimes. But yeah, um, it's not been too bad. Um, but yeah, it's definitely uh, it was definitely better in some way. You had a bit more freedom because you just get outside and, and do stuff. Um, if, if you know if you couldn't go to shops, and, yeah. So hmm. just have to see. Uh, hopefully January. Um, you know, it doesn't see too much of a spike in, in stuff with the the whole Christmas amnesty and stuff. But just, yeah, uh, and then obviously I think maybe by Easter you might start to see a bit of. Uh, a change to sort of some sort of normality, uh, hopefully, and that's just yeah. Like I said, at least you've got that that hope in the distance, that that kind of uh, you know end in sight of like right, we'll get to Easter, then we'll see what it's like. But I think for now it's just kind of like, let's get to Christmas, mm. and then it'll be get to the New Year, and then it'll be like I right, guess get to Easter, and then then we'll see what it's like. But yeah, hopefully, um, maybe 
kind of just start slowly getting back to normal now, but we'll just have to have to wait and see. But yeah, I think I I'm with you. I'm like I see March April as kind of you know that's where things will start to turn around a bit more. I mean, in terms of normality, I've started playing football again, which is has been good. Um, you know, I don't know, like. I know you're, you know, an avid runner. I don't, I don't know if lockdown's affected you running or not, but for me, I, I, you know, at times I've struggled to just, you know, be motivated to be bothered to go for a run. Whereas football, even though some days I, I can't be bothered, I, I know that if I make myself go, that after I played football for for sixty minutes, I know I'll feel better for it, and I'll be glad I did it. So that being just back on again is you know he's positive um and like i say you just, you just aiming towards that end goal of not just because i think a lot of, there's a phrase in the summer a lot of people saying the new normal and that's fine and that was okay but i want to get back to normal <laughs> normal. <laughs> the old normal the old normal yeah um, yeah so. and I, I think i think like i said it, a new world really is it's going to be different but it's not mm. going to be like kind of you know moving to a new planet or anything it's just going to be mm. some things that's slightly different i think i think if anything it's going to be like a mindset shift i think mm. you know I, I do it all the time you're watching something on tv that was kind of pre um coronavirus and you see people like large groups of people uh, or you see people more than two meters or close than two meters together apart you know like, yeah oh, corona. yeah but, so i think get and you know I, i'd be i think i think for, for a long long time like you know, you're always going to be a little bit hesitant of, of kind of being in big crowds and, and stuff. And I think that's going to, take, you know, it takes a, lot, a long time to change attitudes and, and, and opinions and beliefs and stuff. And I think that's that's probably what's, what's going to um, be the main sort of uh, tangible element of kind of the getting back to normal is just people being a bit sort of paranoid and a bit kind of afraid of stuff. Um, even though, you know, in reality, hopefully things, things are okay. But I think it's definitely going to take us sort of... Um, from a from a uh, subjective point of view, just to, to get back to normal and think, right, actually, this is this is okay. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna get it catching anything while I'm out. Um, that's definitely gonna be the hardest bit, I think. But yeah, it'll take time. But I think maybe you know, being realistic, maybe this time next year, um, it'll you know it'll be bitty. It'll be like it was. I think. I think yeah. It probably won't be. You know, and that, that, even though like you see this sort of return to normal back on the horizon, like I'm still not planning anything because you know what's going to happen um, you know holidays all that sort of stuff I, I, me personally I'm like I'll just see how it pans out and then, then, I'll, then I'll plan it from there but yeah I think for the minute just yeah, getting too carried away I think is, is, a, is, a, is a risky move I think because otherwise you might, you might end up disappointed but I think if you don't kind of plan too far ahead and just, just see what happens take each day as it comes yeah I think that's, a, that's about it that's, that, well, that's my mindset um, no I think I agree me. I mean you know we, we've, we've thought about holidays for next year but I'm definitely you know I would not book to go abroad definitely not um, at this stage, um, just I just think, what's the point? It's too much risk that will get cancelled, and then you've got the whole hassle of getting your deposit back or you know rearranging it. Well, you know, um, so yeah, I, I, I'm not saying I won't do anything next year, but I'd rather just kind of play it, play it as it is, you know. Yeah, like you see, you see it all over the place, don't you? Like you know, the, with the um, the news last week with the Warner Brothers, you know. Um, releasing everything next year that they're going to release on streaming as well as sometimes cinemas and that's you know that's that shows that they're not even thinking about um bringing stuff out because they don't know what's going to happen so yeah. you know instead of all that uncertainty like they've had towards the end of the year they've just mm. thought right we'll just um release everything on, on, on streaming just then, and then if it can come out of the cinema good but if not at least we know we're not going to kind of lose a lot of money um with a film that we've spent you know millions on hundreds mm. of millions on that and people are still going to want to see it so mm. um yeah, I think kind of planning too far ahead at this moment in time is a bit uh, well, harder to do than norm- it normally is, but yeah, um, just have to, have to see how it goes. Cool. Let's talk, I think we've probably talked about lockdown enough. <laughs> um, I think everybody probably has. So let's try and get some upbeat. So you mentioned there. What, 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 what do you talk about lo- when, you, when there's nothing, you can't talk about lockdown anymore? I talk about Brexit so that's, then. That's, that's, <laughs> yeah, but yeah, that's, yeah. But not talking about Brexit now. <laughs> no, no, no. Too political. Um, I was going to say. Oh, so, so yeah, I saw that news about Warner Brothers and um, them bringing out the films. Um, I don't think I don't know if you saw Christopher Nolan. I don't think was too happy about that. Um, yeah, like, I, I think like from what I've seen, the, um, they made the decision without consulting like directors. Um, mm. like, so another guy that did uh, June, uh, Denis Villeneuve. He, yeah. he wasn't happy because I think they did tell him that he was, they were going to do it. Mm. Um, and you know, it's his, it's his film and it's his, his project, so I can imagine he's a bit cheesed off. But 
Mm. Um, yeah, I think I think it'll be, it's going to be a few directors about that because you obviously got um, you got the Matrix, you've got um, a few others that I can't think of right now. Um, I think Wonder Woman is the first one. Um, yeah, Wonder, Wonder Woman is pretty I think. Yeah, um, then you've got June, you mentioned Matrix. Oh, da, da, da. A few others, a few others. So, um, so, are there any films you're looking forward to next year, whether you watch them at home or at the cinema? Um, like I said, I managed to get, go and see Tenet um, over summer. Uh, that was when kind of lockdown was kind of a bit eased off in, in summer. Um, but I, I do like going to the cinema. I like sort of the, 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 the tangible nature of it. Um, and I think you do you do kind of get immersed in the whole sort of act of, of watching a film at the cinema. Um, mm. So I do, I, I will, I would like to go again. Um, um, it wasn't too bad last time, you know, it didn't feel too bad, uh, mm. you know, we went to quite a small cinema, like every man cinema, mm. um, which is like, you know, you had to have your mask on when you, when you sat down at your seat and then as soon as you sat down, because the seats were spaced like two meters apart, um, you could take your mask off when you're watching the film. Um, mm. You could have drinks, food and drinks to your, to your seat. So mm. that felt quite normal. Um, and then obviously when you get back outside, you put your mask back on and that, that was a bit weird. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so I, I'd happily go back to the cinema. Um, you know, I think, I think next year, um, yeah, I would, I would have gone to see Wonder, uh, Wonder Woman if that was out of cinema. I would have gone to see uh, June when that came out, but that's been pushed back. Mm. Um, I can't think of what else is coming out, but yeah, there's, I, th- I think yeah, quite a lot of, of, of um, films that are supposed to be out this year I've not seen because you know they've not they've been pushed back or they've just gone straight to streaming. Um, yeah, Matrix would be good. Uh, obviously, you've got the the Snyder Cut, which is obviously just going HBO Max, uh, but yeah, I'd like to see that. Um, yeah, just you know, generally, I think yeah, it's going to be weird next year because obviously you've got maybe a bit of a, a pipeline of films that should have been out this year, and then you've also got the ones that were going to come out next year anyway. Um, so I think it's probably going to be a good film, year for films next year. But obviously you've got um, you know the thing about the like the Oscars, like obviously there's not as many films to choose from and stuff. So um, yeah, I think I think yeah, it'd be good to go back to the cinema. But yeah, if, if they're all on, on streaming at home, then. Um, no, that's that's not the end of the world. Uh, we just have to get a better TV and, and kind of just buy some popcorn. And, uh, see. Well, uh, we I went to Audion the other week and bought literally bought nachos and then they came out and took a bottle off. <laughs> just nachos. <laughs> no, well, nachos and cheese and jalapenos and salsa. What did no film? No, I just watched a film. We watched a film at home. That... Oh, nice, nice. So uh, that... it round round natural round trip. Natural round trip. Well, I was already in the town centre. Um, okay. Doing a bit of shopping, which was a bad idea. Don't don't go shopping at the moment on a Saturday. No. Um, no, you can't make nachos yourself at home. It's quite easy. Oh, I don't know. The Audion cheese is really good. <laughs> I'm sure. I'm sure you can buy that from Amazon or something online. Oh wow! Well. Cinema cheese sauce. Cinema cheese sauce. Google it. You'll I'll, find it. I'll do that next time. So yeah. But save yeah, some money, I, save some petrol. I'm like you. I, 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 you know, I enjoy films. I look forward to going to cinema. I look forward to going to cinema with the boys again. In the summer, we went to watch Jurassic Park because they were re-showing it, and it was a weird experience. But there was hardly anybody there. There was like four, four families in a you know giant cinema, so I didn't feel at risk at all because I had my mask on, and, and yeah, everybody was well spaced out. So it was kind of thingy. So I think it just depends. You know when the rules change in terms of the you know the numbers that are allowed, but I, I'll you know I definitely say I'll probably be going to cinema again next year, and, and yeah, there's plenty of films coming out that you know that I want to see a lot of the Marvel films that maybe should have come out this year and I haven't, um, but yeah, it'd be good. Um, yeah, I think I think you're seeing the news a lot, like people talking about the the death of cinema and stuff. I don't think it is. I think it might change a little bit again. You know, um, hmm. I think yeah, I don't think it's gonna. You know, I think a lot of people enjoy it, especially now. You know, um, I think a lot of people are going to crave those sort of a, like tactile experiences, like like going to the cinema, like going mm. to a restaurant, going to a cafe. So I think, yeah, yeah you know, obviously they'll need to be they'll, they'll need to have films to show, but I think people will, you know, will, will maybe cherish going to the cinema more than they used to because you know maybe we took it for granted a little bit. Yeah, um, definitely. So hopefully, um, you know, you know, the, the cinema stay open because I think it, it is a good thing. Um, we just have to see, but yeah, hopefully, hopefully they stay open. Hopefully there's a there's some, some good films next year. Um, I, I think personally, like, did you see? Did you see Tenet? I haven't seen it. I, I think it's out now. It's out uh, this week. Yeah, yeah. So um, I'm, I, I think, think... I, saw, I, I saw they released the first six minutes on, on YouTube last night. Um, yeah. Like the the prologue, whatever it was. Um, and yeah, I even I watched it again. And I was like, I, I, I don't know if it was the right film to bring out as something. You know, because you kept having to see the headlines that over some of like, oh, is this a film that's going to save cinema? And it's, hmm. I, I, I don't know. It wasn't. It's definitely not his best film. Um, hmm. 
so yeah it was just a shame that that was one of the only films that came out because um, I think it probably would have done better if there wasn't lockdown because I think more people would have gone to see it but um, I, I've not got any urge to see it again because I was like yeah, just yeah um, so think... hopefully there's, there's, there's the films that come out next year the ones that you kind of actually you know relish uh, watching at the cinema because um, I think that was maybe not his best work um, and yeah you know shame that he did, did do as well but yeah it just it, you know end of the day it wasn't a good film either or a great film it was okay it just wasn't a great film so hopefully there's, there's better ones next year that come out I'll definitely give it a watch and then see so how it is. Watch, but you'll, you'll never want to watch it again at all. <laughs> that's not a good review <laughs> yeah, yeah I, 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 I think I was chatting to, to um the guy who get my coffee from at work and he said like if a film if you watch a film and you got to watch the film again to answer some questions then probably not a sign of a good film um so yeah you know not you know like other films that have like plot um you know all the interpretation and stuff that's fine but this one was like what was that about i don't yeah. know i should really watch that yeah so uh, watch it but yeah you'll, you'll see what i mean if you watch it i remember watching inception and at the end you have kind of like a question don't you oh is this yeah. you know still a dream or whatever but i didn't come out of it thinking I immediately need to watch that film again to understand it I understood it, it was a great film loved, um, soundtrack loved it but um, but yeah it doesn't sound like Tenant is the um, is the you know the sequel to Inception that no. maybe people hoped or wished it would be no it feels like it feels like um, they, they cut a lot out because you, you know when you start watching the film it just it almost starts really really suddenly and then there's like it just kind of jumps all over the shop and yeah it feels like they edited a lot out to make it a bit shorter mm. um, but yeah, it doesn't help this sort of the, it just feels like it's just non-stop for, for two hours or however long it was but yeah it was a uh, yeah worth a watch but yeah not not definitely not not his best film mm. have you started you like, wa- though, you like you like the soundtrack it is a good soundtrack have you have you started watching any Christmas films yet no not yet um Obviously, I don't have Disney Plus, uh, and a lot of the classics have gone to gone to Disney Plus, like Home Alone and, mm. and those ones. Um, we tried watching The Grinch a couple of weeks ago, um, the, the 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 new one with the, you know from um, people who do the Minions. Um, yeah, yeah. Don't, Connie lost interest quite quickly. Um, mm. I don't think she understood it, but she's been doing Christmas stuff at nursery now, so she might she might be a bit more interested in it now. But yeah, yeah um, been been hitting the, the Christmas playlist hard on 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 the. On the speakers at home, um, I, I like finding like obscure Christmas songs, um, and yeah, kind of getting building a playlist from them. So you know, we don't go down the George Michael route and, and the Mariah Carey route. We try and find obscure Christmas songs. Um, well, like, those, yeah, what like Hanky, no Mr. Yet. Hanky, the Christmas Poo, or no, no, even more Pro- proper crim, uh, <laughs> proper crimba. Yeah, no, 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 they're, 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 they're kind of you know they're classics, but yeah, no. Uh, with, yeah, we're trying to try, yeah, so we've had some obscure uh, Christmas songs playing, but no, no Christmas films, unfortunately, yet. But I would like to watch, um, I quite like Scrooge. Scrooge is a good one. Oh, yeah, uh, I watched Scrooge the other, the other night it, yeah. with the boys. Um, is I thought they might be a bit scared of it because it is quite scary. It's only, yeah, it's a, I think it's only a PG. Um, but now they were all right with it. I don't think they were, they didn't like enjoy it as much as probably I did when I was a kid. But uh, yeah, they did enjoy it. I'd say their favourite um, Christmas films are Home Alone, um, and they they love Nativity. Have you seen that one? I saw it a while, a, a few years ago. It was, it was it was like three of them now, isn't it? But yeah, yeah. the first one I think was actually quite good. It was before Martin Freeman got famous. Yeah, um, or proper famous. Yeah. Yeah. So they love Na- they like Nativity. We went to watch that um, as a player last year at Wolverhampton, and that was really good. Uh, my personal favourite is obviously Elf. Um, yes, that, that is a classic. And um, but yeah, so what's your favourite Christmas song then? Christmas, favourite Christmas song. Uh, there is one um, by Bing Crosby. Uh, obviously, you love know Bing Crosby, but he did. He's done like a, he did a Hawaiian Christmas song um, <laughs> called Melly Melly Kaliki Maka. <laughs> this is an absolute tune. Um, check it out. Is uh, I think that is is that on the National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation? When, maybe, maybe. Well, I think he's he's like daydreaming about something. Yeah, and then there's another one. Um, I think I can't remember the artist. I think it's Serge Rios, but it's basically like a Spanish um, child, uh, and it, it's sounds called Donde Esta Santa Claus. Or mm. some, you know. If you know Spanish, where is Santa Claus? But yeah, so that's a bit of a tune as well. Uh, they're, they're two of the, 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 the signifiers of Christmas in, in, in this household. All right. Um, so I definitely recommend Justin Adams here. He plays because he's pretty good. I think my, my favourite is 
Paul McCartney's simply having a wonderful Christmas time. Oh, that's a good one. That is a good one. That is a good one. Just reminds me of like I, I don't know about you, but when I was a kid, we used to have like Christmas parties every year, like various like my yeah. gran- granddad's conch service clubs and stuff like that, and that was always a classic that got played. <laughs> so that just Crowd reminds pleasure. reminds me of those 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 better times, those happier times. Yeah, the floor filler. Yeah, and, yeah, and uh, there's another one. Do you remember? Um, it's like an old school song. Uh, what like not what like a dinosaur? Um, you know the one. I mean, everybody what the dinosaur. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, yeah. The, 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 that group was not was. Um, they've done one uh, called Christmas Time in the Motor City, and it's not Christmassy at all. Um, but it is. It's a good because it says Christmas is therefore a Christmas song. Um, that's <laughs> a good one as well. Um, it's got a really good rap bit in it. So yeah, that's, that's worth a watch as well. Or listen to sorry. So, so I, I think obviously the. the a question to around with Christmas and films is in your books is Die Hard a Christmas movie or not? Um, I'm probably going to throw your audience up in arms because I don't <laughs> think I've ever seen Die Hard all the way through therefore I can't <laughs> comment on whether it's uh, a Christmas film or not. <laughs> Craig, I cannot believe you've not seen Die Hard. Um, well, you know me, I've never seen Star Wars all the way through either. Uh, uh, I, I've got a, a weird uh, fixation with not going back in time to watch films that I've never seen when they came out. Um, so yeah, you know, if I saw a film when it first came out, like Home Alone yeah. one and Home Alone two and Back to the Future, I watch those again. But if I if I didn't see a film when it first came out, then I'm, That's I'm, it. I'm very it's reluctant to go back and see it's it. It's so. dead to you now. Yeah. <laughs> just yeah, just, I don't like living in the past. Oh well, I, I'll I'll save that question. If somebody, if somebody can compel me enough to what to go back in time and watch something that you know, I'll do it. But yeah, if if it's down to my own choosing, I'm I'm, I'm reluctant to do so. Oh, well. But yeah, so I can't comment whether Die Hard is a Christmas film. I'd say yes because it's set at Christmas. Yeah. Um, I think that would right, that would be my choice, but I think I think I have to leave that question to someone who's more of an expert in Die Hard than yourself. Yeah, but then then uh, by that rule of uh, Cool Runnings in my eyes is a Christmas film as well because it's snowing it. Um, that's, that's, that's my rubric for. for, for a Christmas film. <laughs> I don't think I've ever heard anyone call Cool Runnings a Christmas film. So. It's a feel good film. It's, it's, it's a feel good no, film. There's, there's, <laughs> There's a family spirit to it. There's, there's camaraderie. It's, yeah. it's Christmas. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. So yeah, that, yeah, yeah that, that is, that is a good film to watch at Christmas. In my, in, in my eyes, anyway. But what do I know? I'm not into hard. Okay. Have you watched any uh, any films recently or not? Mm, no, I'm about halfway through a film called The Platform on Netflix, um, which my boss told me to watch. Oh, about I've seen three that. Ago. I've seen that. Yeah, um, it's all right so far. Um, but yeah, it's just very very hard to watch films at the minute, just because yeah. Um, the last thing I want to do when I'm staring at screen all day is, is sit in front of another another screen. Um, but yeah, so I'm, I'm struggling to watch films at the minute, even though I do I do enjoy watching a film. There's one the one that came out uh, a couple of weeks ago that I, I do fancy watching. Uh, Possessor. I don't know if you've seen that one. Not seen that one. It. No. Uh, it's yeah, it's a horror film, um, but like a horror version of Inception. I just take it take mm-hmm. it back to, to Inception. Um, so basically, instead of um, planting ideas in people's minds you can basically take over somebody's mind uh, a bit like you know in, in the same way that you do with inception into the to get into the dreams yeah but then those you basically those people that in, in of um kidnap people's minds then end up using those people's bodies as, as like uh, tools to, to murder people um so like slightly dark take on inception yeah, yeah. Um, but it's meant to be really good uh, and i like horror uh, and it's from the son of uh, David Cronenberg, you know, did the flash. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so it's, it's pretty gory, uh, which is quite good. See, I do fancy watching that, but yeah, just. Yeah, is that on Netflix then? Trying, or... No, I think it came like, went, went, came out of the cinema, uh, yeah. went straight to streaming as well at the same time. So yeah, I think you gotta you got to pay £3.49 or whatever it is to, to, to rent a film from, from iTunes or wherever you get your films from. I'll have a look for that one. So uh, if you've not been watching film, have you been watching TV or Netflix? Been kind of watching a bit of the crown, uh, or kind of half watching the crown. Hmm. Um, yeah, just just something to, to, to watch. Um, the first few episodes were pretty good, uh, but after that, I just kind of lost a bit of interest. Um, just because, yeah, I'm not overly interested in the royal family. Um, so yeah, I'm not that bothered about what, whether they have arguments or whether they, you know, um, some of the some of the interest the stuff is, is interesting that, that I didn't really know about. Um, hmm. um, but yeah, other than that, I'm like, yeah, I'm not really bothered about whether they. Prince Philip had an affair or didn't have an affair or whether the Queen was jealous of, of, of JFK's wife. Yeah, no interest, but yeah. Um, so it's good background stuff, but I'm not really paying attention to, to what's going on. I'm just kind of um, doing my Christmas shopping or um, catching up on the news on my phone, looking yeah. at when it's on. Um, I think Andrew's been watching The Crown. I've watched a few episodes. 
it's okay, but I just find that I think it's a bit harsh because I think a lot of people watch it and think this must be factually accurate. But actually, yeah. you know, you don't know what was said. You don't know the conversations. I'm sure the Queen yeah. isn't a writer on the, on that no. program. <laughs> so she's not, not handing her diaries <laughs> over. She, I think. So I think you've still got to take. You know, there is entertainment, and you've got to take yeah. everything with a pinch of salt and stuff. Yeah, I find it a bit weird. I'm trying to like they try and make it a bit saucy. Like I'm not. I'm not interested in the Queen and Prince Philip being saucy with each other. <laughs> not, not interested in that whatsoever. Like, yeah, the, the, the romance side of it's a bit, a bit weird for me. It just makes me feel a bit uncomfortable. Um, but yeah, no, like, like I said, it's, I remember like when I was trying to find out whether a certain piece of uh, the story was true, um, and then they were saying that the, the writer of it, um, he said he liked kind of weaving facts with 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 fiction and like, kind of leaving it open to, to the viewers to, to interpret. Mm. Um, but I think, like I said, I think as yeah, maybe the first series is probably more factu- uh, factually accurate, and then I think as they've kind of got to, to season four, um, they maybe, maybe played a bit more fast and loose with, with the facts and just tried to, um, you know, ramp up the, the scandal factor just to get people talking. But I think, yeah, definitely, you know, certain people will just see it as, as, as truth and not question whether, whether it's true or false. But yeah, I, th- I definitely think it's, it it's, should be. Um, you know, like with the other stuff, like um, Made in Chelsea and, and all that sort of stuff, they always have that little disclaimer at the start saying um, some scenes have been added for, for entertainment purposes or whatever yeah. it is. And I think, yeah, definitely um, the crowd maybe should have something like that, I think, because otherwise, yeah, um, could land themselves in hot water with, with, you know, I'm sure the Queen's pretty powerful, so if she catches on that they've that, that said something that's not true. Well, um, I think I saw something online saying that the, the royal family are kind of very, always very reluctant to litigate so sue anyone they, they do it as a last resort and i think there was there was someone was saying that the writers of the crown are kind of relying on that that they won't sue them for you know for for anything because they they, they don't want to get involved in litigation and stuff so which i think again is a bit harsh and again when you watch it you've got to watch it thinking this is um you know entertainment <laughs> this is not a you know a documentary but yeah, it, it is weird. Like yeah, like you do, you do learn some stuff, but I think it's just a, yeah, a bit, bit soapy for me. I mean, so you, I, I know because you've already said you, you obviously haven't been watching the Mandalorian. Unfortunately, not. No, um, I know it's Star Wars. Um, <laughs> from what I've heard, it's, it's it's got good reviews. Um, just yeah, anything, not anything space related, obviously, but yeah, just for some reason Star Wars, Star Trek, just never, never um, was a fixture uh, in in when I was growing up, so I never really kind of cottoned onto to, on, onto the sort of the, the culture side of it. Um, even now, like you know, but all the all the sort of hype around the, the films and, and the TV program stuff, I'm like, yeah, it doesn't bother me at all. Um, mm-hmm. I watch them if they're on, but yeah, I don't really, you know, um, kind of look for plot plot uh, points or look for plot holes or anything. But I'm just like, yeah, it's, it's okay. Um, so yeah, I've not watched it before, so yeah, maybe I'm a, I'm a terrible guest house if, if you're going to be discussing the Mandalorian. Um, I think maybe Yoda's pretty cute. Um, uh, yeah, I think what yeah. I would say is that if I mean, because I don't, if you do get the opportunity to watch it, I think I'd, get, I'd say to you give it a chance because I th- think as a, even as a Star Wars fan, some things not all, all the Star Wars stuff. I think a lot of people watch it now and think, oh, it's not as good as it used to be, or you know, it's it's it's, it's not great. But for me, The Mandalorian is it's a real good watch and the story is really good. Um, uh, you know, it's and because it's re- released weekly as well, it's got that. You know, whereas with things that drop on Netflix and you just you know you watch them in one night or two nights, um, with the Mandalorian you've got to wait to the next week. So when it leaves and you think, oh, you know, I want to see how this goes, it almost makes you a little bit more um, more um, interested in in the next episode. And, yeah, it builds that sort of anticipation. Though. And you know, Baby Yoda is you know really cute, and I think you know once you watch it and see Baby Yoda, <laughs> maybe I did, I did I did read something somewhere um, which I thought was quite clever. Um, that I'm not really obviously I'm not being kind of a Star Wars aficionado, but apparently um, the first sort of the original three films were um, kind of the the, the the overarching plot was obviously. Um, kids um mm. even the, the sequels i think uh, or, or the you know the recent three um were kind of kids growing up with with um and, and coping and coming to terms with the parents um mm. you obviously like luke um and, and darth vader and then uh, ray and 
whatever. Uh, mm. Other guy, Palpatine, is it? Um, yeah, that's one. Yeah, they're, you know, so it's, it's like you, the, the kids kind of dealing with the parents, but apparently the Mandalorian's kind of like slipped it on his head, uh, and it's more about kind of um, the parents kind of trying to deal with with actually being a parent, um, which I thought was quite clever. Um, yeah, I'd never really, really like piece that together but obviously maybe you being being massive into Star Wars maybe you knew that straight away but that, that, that was something I'd never really realised and I thought it was quite quite an interesting take on you know kind of the, the perspective of the story which I thought was, was quite clever so I don't know if you, you picked up on I that I definitely hadn't picked that. up on that and now you say it I do think yeah actually because in, in the um, the Mandalorian you know he is a kind of a father figure to to Baby Yoda um, and uh, like this he's, he's coming up to the season finale now and um, you know, I imagine this is the season finale because I don't want to spoil it for you. He's, he's going to be about him, you know, really you know, trying to rescue Baby Yoda, if that makes sense. Um, but um, but it, as a Star Wars fan, it's been good because there's been just just enough Star Wars kind of stuff that you watch it and you think, oh, I know that. Um, but not too much that you think, oh, I need to Google that, or I need to go on Wikipedia <laughs> and yeah. see, see what they're chatting about. Um, so, you know, because I like to think I'm a Star Wars fan, but I, you know, I can't recite stuff, you know, like a um, encyclopedia like some people can. Uh, and I've definitely watched it and, and felt, you know, engaged in it. And yeah, it's just been good, and the st- story's good, and and yeah, the season finale is coming up, and I, I'm. I'm like Friday, Friday at eight o'clock. Once the boys are asleep, I'll uh, I'll be watching it and, and trying to find out what happens. Nice, nice. Well, yeah, I hope it, I hope it lives up to, to expectations. Mm. Um, so yeah, I think movies, TV. Um, the next thing really want to chat about was video games. But again, <laughs> you don't really play video games. No, unfortunately not. No. Um, yeah, just never, never, never get the time. Um, I think the last thing I had was a. PlayStation 3, uh, mm. I bought a pre-owned one, uh, and I did play The Last of Us, and that was good, but after that, I was like, right, well, yeah, um, I'm done with that now, uh, so yeah, I've never played a game since, I don't think, mm. uh, maybe, oh, I play, played um, Cuphead once uh, at Christmas with my brother, um, <laughs> on, on the, his Xbox, but other than that, I'm like, yeah, um, I, I kind of obviously see about games coming out in the news and stuff, but mm. other than that, yeah, I have no, no first-hand experience of, of, of games in the current guys unfortunately mm. so yeah I'm a really terrible guest having your first episode um, I'm, I'm bringing shame on this podcast yeah. and I, 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 can, I can only wholeheartedly apologise for that <laughs> it's all right. I think somebody who's a bit more up to date uh, next time um, well, you know, somebody, somebody's down with the kids well I think it's been a good podcast so far and, and you definitely have engaged me and in, uh, in the conversation um, I'm, I've, I'm quite happy with the fact I'm the top one guest yeah uh, new know, you, and, guest at the minute, yeah. and nobody can take that you can never not be the first guest and, but yeah, and then obviously, yeah, I'm the best guest at the minute because I'm yeah. your only guest, so that's, yeah. that's, I'm holding on to that. Yeah, you will uh, have that crown. at the minute. Um, <laughs> but yeah, obviously, till, till next week when somebody else much better comes along and throws <laughs> me out of the water uh, with the knowledge of Star Wars and, and computer games. But yeah, <laughs> I'll, I'll enjoy the line while it lasts. It's fine. I think when I was, you know, when my, when my boys were younger, um, you know, I completely missed the majority of PS4 and, you know, like the end of the, the kind of PS3 cycle. But then as they got older, and um, you start to get a little bit of you know your time back. Um, you know I've quite enjoyed, definitely more recently. Um, you know getting back into to video games again, and there's yeah. there's some good you know because like, I think a lot of the kind of stuff online is well, Fortnite or Call of Duty or you know which are all like multiplayer games you'll play online. But actually the main games that I've played recently have all kind of been single player like Spider Man, Miles Morales. Um, I play the Avengers and stuff. Just games where I don't have to commit too much time to them. I can play maybe twenty minutes, an hour at a time, over a few weeks, uh, and then eventually finish it. And they've just got good storylines. Um, you know, I was lucky. I got a PS Five. I played um, Miles Morales. Um, completed that, but it's quite a short game. It's only about twenty hours. Um, but but yeah, it's a really good experience and. Um, you know, maybe in a few years' time, Craig, when you get a bit of your time back, um, you know, you, you you can boot up the PS6 or whatever it might be, and, uh, and play some video games. Yeah, no, but I'm, I'm quite looking forward to like I said that that point where um, maybe uh, Connie's a bit older um, and she maybe gets into games, um, mm. and then yeah, like I said, you can kind of share that um, 
with with her the same way that you know like I'm looking forward to, to the time where she wants to watch or you know you, you watch Home Alone for the first time and she she like laughing her head off um, at all the stuff and like, yeah so it's, yeah maybe maybe a few years away yeah but that is definitely going to be a, um, an exciting time I think until like I said you kind of like rediscover um, just kind of what's going on at the minute I think yeah games films all that sort of stuff uh, will be a, kind of a nice a nice thing to, to have to look forward to I think but yeah for, for now um, it's just yeah when you when you get a bit of a bit of freedom it's just like right I'm just going to sit down and just <laughs> sit in darkness for, for, for an hour until we go to bed <laughs> Uh, yeah, I think I remember the times being very, very tired. Um, yeah. Leo wasn't the best sleeper. Ted's a much better sleeper, but Leo, uh, for the first few years of his life, um, yeah, I think they just kind of. I can't even. I think I struggle to remember him now. Um, <laughs> and um, but yeah, but it, you know, it was a good experience. I think you know when Leo started playing video games, um, or you know playing with them, it was strange because. When you like, he he his kind of way you play a game was he just wanted to explore everything, which when you think about it is is obvious. But I remember when I first started, I'd be like, "Oh no, Leo, let's go this way, let's do this, let's do that." But then eventually, I kind of just kind of let him do, you know, whatever he wanted and explore, and um, it was a you know much enjoyable experience. And now, you know, both boys. You know, play the all the there's like loads of Lego games like Lego Star Wars, Lego Marvel, Lego this. They you know they love those games. Um, Ted's just started playing um, Minecraft, which again, like from my point of view, I was like, why would anyone play Minecraft? <laughs> the, the, the graphics are the graphics the graphics are horrendous, and um, you know what you're doing is just it looks boring. But actually, um, playing it with Ted, you know, quite quite enjoyable. You know. It's very creative, if that makes sense, um, and it's been quite nice to kind of play with him and you know build things and you know even to the point where just going around blowing things up, which sounds a bit you know childish, but it is fun and it is you know it's been good to do that experience um, with both of them and you know in different games um, and you know we've been playing Mars Morales together and the boy with that because obviously it's I think it's rated a sixteen, so what I tend to do is let them kind of swing through the city um but i tell them they've got to avoid any of the like the red dots or yellow dots which are things where the story um progresses and the, the people shoot at you and stuff but they've loved um playing that game and ted especially because um he um he'll climb to the biggest bu- building and um he jumps off it, but he knows to put Spotify on. He puts on the song from the Into the Spider Verse, What's Up Danger, and then he jumps off the building like he's in the film. So, you know, and you know, that's he you can see it on his face, he's loving that, absolutely loving it. Um so yeah, I do you know I think sometimes video games especially get a you know, bad press, um for whatever reason, but I can only think of positive, you know, experiences with my, you know, with Leo and Ted playing um, various games so far in the last couple of years, and um, you know, I'm I'm now getting to the point where I think in a few years' time they will be playing games that you know they won't want me to play with them, and um, you know, I'll miss that. But uh, but while I've got it, I'll uh, I'll enjoy it. I think yeah, I think it is. It's, uh... If it's a shared experience, then it's, it's a bit better because obviously you're not just sticking it in front of the computer and like leaving them to it for three hours and then coming back and uh, you know kind of no um, see where they're at. Like you know, if you're if you kind of doing that with them, that's that's a bit yeah, better. I think yeah. yeah, definitely there definitely does come a time when it's like right, yeah, you don't yeah. play with us anymore. Um, but I, I think like one of mine um, when I was younger, um, obviously PlayStation uh, One um, that's kind of the main console that I had. Um, yeah. Every year I always get the FIFA for Christmas, and I remember like kind of. All the family used to come around to our house at Christmas, you know, Christmas Day, and like we'd all play the new FIFA like together. Like you know, yeah. my uncles, um, they didn't have a console or anything, but they kind of always found it quite cool just to see how the game had changed and like yeah. you know just play play for a few hours together, um, different games just having having fun. And I think yeah, like you know, obviously you remember the games and, and kind of the, how good the games were, but I think sometimes you, you do remember kind of the the, the, the the memories attached to, to the games as well. I feel like yeah, that's that's kind of one memory. Then obviously. Um, the Nintendo 64 playing like WrestleMania and stuff. Like I remember that the game, the game's a classic. But uh, I remember just playing 
being out of my friends. I was playing that like till the you know I used to have to blow the dust out of the controller. Uh, <laughs> used to, um, you know the, 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 the things that are attached to, to playing games like the memories mm. that they were. And I think I think yeah, like obviously, hopefully again, the kids do the same. You know they remember playing. You know you know the first time they got a console or you know the first game they ever completed and stuff. And I think those are things that yeah you can't really take for granted because um, you know they are kind of in, in their own way sort of cherishable, I suppose. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's good. I think, um, yeah, I think, it, the, you know, with Christmas coming up and, and it's, it's really all about memories, really, and video games for me is, is good memories and, and long, long may it continue. Yeah. Um, I think that kind of brings us to the end, Craig, unless there's anything that's, you know, anything you, you really want to talk about. I just really disappointed that I, I admitted that I dance in Die Hard. I think that's going to be my legacy. Um, on, on, you know, that's going to be the, the soundbite that looks in the, in the papers tomorrow. Um, I think it will. Front press. page of the sun. Forget yeah, Brexit. I think, I think Craig, it's, Craig, it's presses, yeah. Craig has not seen Die Hard all the way through. Yeah, that's 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 my you know that's my, my, my cross to bear. Um, <laughs> that's my burden. Uh, and yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna lose sleep tonight. Knowing that I've admitted that, just you know, just the, just the guilt of, of not seeing it. I think you know. Oh well, you I can, never. I can, I can sense a disappointment in your voice. I've got to as a friend. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna go and reflect uh, on what I've done and, and just you know, you know, take some take some long hard looks at myself in the mirror. Um, maybe wearing a vest. Um, obviously, just to try and be like John McLean. Um, and then maybe maybe I should watch a film. Uh, just not with Connie, obviously. Uh, yeah, I won't. Well, I won't recommend it with Connie. I'm not sure. No, and then then I'll give you my my. my my opinion as to whether it's a Christmas film or not, but I'll I'll I'll, I'll give it a preemptive yes, it is a Christmas film, and then once I've seen it, I'll I'll, I'll confirm or, or deny that, that initial <laughs> hypothesis. But we'll see. Oh well, I, I'm... hopefully, yeah, hopefully, I'm not I'm not um, kind of stops the, the podcast before it's got going with that with that shocking revelation. Um, and if I have, then. Yeah, I'm sorry, and I'll understand if, if you never want to be friends again. <laughs> well, I, I got another to the opposite, Craig. I think you've been a great um, guest on the inaugural uh, or first um, podcast, uh, and thank you for uh, for for coming on. It's been it's been a good laugh, uh, good to yeah, chat. Thanks, no, thank you for having me. It's been it's been good. It's been it's, it's, it's been been like a like you said in the synopsis, like a a real chat. It's um, mm. been good. Um, yeah, so thank you for having us on, cool. uh, and yeah, hopefully we can we can have a a real. Um, soft drink at some point yeah uh, we'll in, meet in the future. we'll meet again in the future we might have to, might have to pre-book a table and, and, and order via some sort of app but yeah we'll, we'll do it um, we'll do it we'll make it so yeah we'll make it so yeah is that Star Trek yeah, that is yeah yeah <laughs> there you go you keep coming along I, I know I, I get the cultural references but I just don't I've never seen the films um, you know obviously the, the, the cultural uh Relevance kind of filtered through to me, um, but yeah, I couldn't tell you who said it or I just know it's from Star Trek. So. Well, it's, it's again, impressive. More, more signs of weakness. <laughs> right. Well, next week hopefully we'll be chatting with an, another guest. Um, life out of lockdown, preparing for Christmas, and as mentioned, the season finale of Mandalorian. If there's any topics anybody out there wants to hear about, then get in touch. And if you're interested in featuring an episode, then email me at gamerparentsuk at gmail.com. And remember, you are not alone, and it's okay to not be okay. Thanks for listening.